Okay, well, we are going to get started here. Thank you, everybody, for having us. Delphi Demo Slam. Uh, I was able to procure seven other folks. I did have eight, but one has been pulled into an meeting, so Trisha Hall may be able to make uh, meet us here in a little bit. If not, then uh, let's have Bill present on what she's doing. So, um, yeah, I'm really excited. Uh, are my friends from around the state. We have some people that are from um, Portland. Anybody heard of Portland, Indiana? Oh, man. Yeah, Tad, that's because you're the only one that lives down there. So uh, <laughs> we have some uh, people from the north, people from Indianapolis, people from all over the state here. Uh, we have some Google innovators, some trainers, uh, keynote speakers from some of the summer e-learning conferences, uh, curriculum directors, tech people, we have classroom teachers, we have some TikTokers, we have some marathon runners, some sons, some daughters, some moms and dads, and my wife. So, grandmas and grandpas, too. Grandmas and grandpas, that's right. Bill, is something you need to tell us? No. Oh. Okay. I, I hope not. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, well, each person is going to have five minutes to demonstrate either a, uh, either uh, whatever they want to show everybody. And there will be some links in the chat as a, uh, as a hop in. Um, and we'll get those, and then I will also get those links to you in an email later as well. Uh, they're gonna have no more than five minutes. And at thirty seconds, I'm gonna I'm gonna give them an annoying beeping sound that they only have thirty seconds left, so they can wrap it up. Um, at the end, we're gonna have a we're gonna put a little Google form in the chat, so we're gonna vote for the winner. And they will probably aside from getting a virtual high five from me, um, we'll we'll find out something else nice for them to do. So, um, okay, well, let me open up who is going to be our first presenter here real quick. Um, let's see. And let's see this. And, okay, well, let's go here with our first, first person. Chris Young gets to go first. Chris, if you'd like to, I'll uh, give you the screen. It's all yours. All right. So we're ready to do this. Are you ready? Uh, I guess so. Let's see here. Okay, timer started. Okay. Well, all right. Hey, teachers, uh, I see you out there. Hey. And in your virtual class. Uh, and so you want to spice it up and you, maybe you see your friends from other districts and they can change their backgrounds because they have Zoom. Um, and that makes you a little bit jealous because maybe they have more uh, kids showing up, who knows, but at least you're not being Zoom bombed um, because that would be an absolute disaster. Um, and actually, <laughs> The FBI, I don't know if you knew this or not, but the FBI had to be called in on some of those cases. And, um, you know, uh, I know I don't have time for that. Um, but if I'm being honest, like, I don't even know what day it is. So I probably do have time for that. Like, I just keep track by how I'm showering. So um, at this point, we're on a mission to make our virtual classes as um, basically as awesome as we possibly can and to make learning just come to life for our students. And so you think to yourself, like, I wonder if I could get like a celebrity to come to my class because they're not really doing anything either. So you think of ways that you could get like Post Malone maybe to be a guest speaker. Um, and so now that's kind of like somewhat possible. Um, and so what I'm using to do this, I'm gonna go ahead and present my screen is called Snap Camera. And so Snap Camera is, it's, it's basically a thing through Snapchat, but you don't actually even need a Snapchat account to do it. And, 
And whether you're using like Loom or anything, it basically gives you a, a second feed of your camera where you can put these different filters and things on it. Um, you give an email address. So like I gave my personal email um, that like I use for spam and stuff. It's an, it's an old AOL account. Um, and the only downside is it's not a Chrome extension. Like it requires like a Windows machine or like I have a MacBook that I'm using to run um, Snap Camera. But um, so you, you install it and then you've got all of these different filters and different things that you can basically choose from. So like if I wanted to be Tiger King, um, that's completely possible. Um, and so you can search all sorts of awesome things. My favorite one, which uh, a lot of the people in this chat know, like Kyle said I was pretty earlier. I don't know. <laughs> Diva. <laughs> So you can do all sorts of fun stuff. I'm gonna go ahead and turn it off with the snap camera. Because he gave me five minutes, I'm used to having three. I wanna show one other thing with Google really quick uh, on Kyle. Um, so Kyle is the number 15th ranked Kyle Klein in the world. Um, my source is Google Images. And so like you can see here, we can go through and he's actually number 15 and number 16. Um, and so I wanted to show some things. This is the number one Kyle. And so Google has the coolest things in the weirdest places. So if I click on this image of the number one Kyle, this little teeny tiny button here, I can change the shape of it to like whatever. And so like he's number one, I wanna make it like a smiley face, I can. Um, this guy with the sweet beard, like I think he's beautiful with that beard. And so if I wanna put a heart around that Kyle client, I can. And so you click on the image, it's just this little button. But the really cool thing I wanna show you is number five, Kyle Klein. What a beefcake. Um, and so with the number five, Kyle Klein, what I can do, I've got the 15 Kyle Klein. It, Google's got this everything in the weirdest spots. But do you see this little explore button that's down here on my slides? Check this out. So I've got two images on top of each other. They're not formatted. I click this. And with the click of the button, it gives me options for how to align this. And so it's like, I want this one, boom. Actually, I like that one. And so it looks like Kyle's peering through the window at Beefcake Kyle Klein. And you know, <laughs> it formats my screen automatically perfectly better. All right, awesome. Yeah. So anyways, as I get going here, I just want to say, you know, like you can basically turn yourself into anybody with Snap Camera. Um, you can be an edu star. And honestly, if I don't win, this someone called the cops because i got robbed slam <laughs> yeah. all, right. all right thank you chris young chris you want to um tell everybody where you're from and what you do for your for your actual job yeah so um i am the strategic learning coordinator uh in Southern Hancock Schools, which is in New Palestine, Indiana. We're about 25 minutes southeast of Indianapolis. I was a science teacher for about 10 or 11 years, and now I work with basically teachers and coach uh, as technology integration, similar to what Kyle does, um, but I work with K-12 teachers. So thank you guys for having me. Awesome, thank you. All right, well, we're gonna see who our next presenter is here. So. All right, Seth, I hope you're ready. I've got something. Um, so uh, okay. I'm going to go to plan B because I'm not going to use a snap camera anymore. Okay, hey, you got to introduce yourself before I start the timer. Do what you do. I got, I got you. Actually, I'll just start presenting right now. You tell me when to go. Yeah, I'm ready to go. Go. All right, here we go. So I want to talk to you guys about e-learning. And yeah, I know everybody's talking about e-learning, but I want to change the E to exciting, escaping, and engineering. All right, so my name is Seth Ponder. I teach in South Bend, Indiana at Riley High School. I'm one of the Project Lead the Way teachers way up here. Um, so engineering is what I do, but I love the engineering because it we like to take the stuff that the students are learning in English class and and history class and science class and math class and mash them all together. So I wanna encourage you to slam all of your classes together for e-learning activities for your students in the next few weeks that we have left. 
So the exciting part I want to show you is Novel Effect. If you do not have Novel Effect, download the app right now. It is amazing. It brings stories to life. And so what it does is it listens to you read and it listens to your students read. And it goes at the pace. It adds sound effects. So let's read one of my favorite stories, which is Rosie Revere, the engineer. All right. Is everybody ready? Thanks for listening. This is the story of Rosie Revere, who dreamed of becoming a great engineer. In Lilla Green's classroom at Blue River Creek, young Rosie sat shyly, not daring to speak. But when no one saw her, she peeked in the trash for treasures to add to her engineering stash. And late, late at night, Rosie rolled up her sleeves and built in her hideaway under the eaves. Alone in her attic, the moon high above, dear Rosie made gadgets and gizmos she loved. And when she grew sleepy, she hid in her machines un far under beds where you'd never be seen. When Rosie was young, she had not been so shy. She worked with her hair swooping over one eye and made fine inventions for uncles and aunts and hot dog dispensers and helium pants. So you can hear the, I'm going to pause it. So you could hopefully hear the app playing. And so then I want to ask you to like maybe read half the story, pause and let the students finish. Have them write a story about if they're Rosie or if they're friends with Rosie, what can they do? Maybe encourage them to become engineers and turn their living rooms into pillow forts. And then this is where the E comes in, the escape. So this is more for teachers. My favorite app this year is the Starbucks app. If you do not have it, it is amazing. You can like get your drinks ready in the morning, order it up. Just so happens there's a Starbucks between where I drop my kids off for school and where I go to school. So it's perfect for me. I also want to encourage you guys to stay safe, wear your mask these days when you go pick up your Starbucks. <laughs> and then there's the engineering aspect. So you can have the kids build forts. You can also have them use this great website called Tinkercad. So you can see there's a little blinking LED there. So you can use this with your math, your science, your engineering, uh, even there's some computer science. You can see there's like block coding down here. Um, and so this is a great website. Um, and let's say Rosie Revere wants to make a button that gives us the right answer. So let's go into what this looks like. And um, I also wanna encourage you to check out YouTube. There's great tutorials out there. And so let's say, hey, when I start this simulation, I press this button, the light turns on. That's perfect. But hey, it's super easy to just find a new light because when we have a right answer, we have a green light. And you can do some simple coding that when the button is pushed, it turns on, when else it's not on. And I also want to point out that there is a link to a whole bunch of tutorials that I've made and I've found for you to use and your students to use too. There's even some cool tutorials with LCD screens that you can turn some dials, get some readouts working for you that say vote for Seth and a little bit.ly that says Sam Kyle. And finally, make your e-learning exciting, escape, and engineering. Please vote for Seth. Maybe some Starbucks gift cards will be the prize. I don't know. <laughs> oh, All right. Thank you, Dad. Yeah. You, had 30, you had 20 seconds left. Wow. I don't know about that Billy Slam Kyle, but. Um, <laughs> oh, it's supposed to be the Kyle Slam, not Slam Kyle. Oh, my bad. <laughs> oh, goodness. No gracious. And Seth, I think you cheated. I think you showed more than one thing. You might automatically be out. They all. All right. <laughs> That's fine. I knew Chris would bring it, so I, I knew I'd have to bring more than one thing, too. <laughs> All right, next up, we got four left. Uh-oh, it's a My walker. <clears throat> All right, here, you guys go ahead and share your screen. All right. Oh. And now Terry's going to know what it's like to be so lucky. <laughs> All right, hold on here. It's being slow.
Okay. Um, what's that? I hear the garage has better Wi-Fi. <laughs> it must have better Wi-Fi, I guess. <laughs> That's All right. time I get to put her on a timer to stop talking, so this would be great. Oh, can it? <laughs> Don't make me log off. <laughs> All right. So, am I ready? Yep, you're ready to go. Okay. Uh, so I'm going to talk to you just kind of about my uh, Google Innovator project, which is called Be the Light. Um, so Kyle asked us to introduce ourselves. My name is Tara Klein. I'm an instructional designer at Purdue. And um, over the last year, I've been working on my Google Innovator project. And it's something that I've become very passionate about. It was passionate in the applying process. And then uh, I've become even more passionate as I've seen the project roll out. But it's uh, when you apply to the Innovator uh, program, you apply with a problem that you see in education. And the problem that I see in education is that our youth are struggling with mental health issues now more than ever. And there were some pretty alarming statistics that really made me uh, kind of jump in and uh, go for this application process. So according to NAMI, 17% of high school students have seriously considered suicide. 50% of children ages 8 to 15 are experiencing a mental health condition. They don't receive treatment. And half of all lifetime cases of mental illness begin by age 14. Uh, this spoke to me in a lot of ways with the students that I work with. And then also, uh, we have two children that are either in that range or very, very close to that, that range. So that's pretty scary to think that that's when um, some of these suicidal ideations begin. And so my goal with my project is to help the members of our community by compiling a book of short stories. and. Uh, the short stories are people that have written about journeys that they've had it, uh, for a difficult time in their life and positive ways that they have gotten through that difficult time. And uh, the title of the book is going to be Be the Light. And um, I'm hopeful to provide stories that are going to help people in a variety of different areas. So people struggle with all kinds of different things from addiction, anxiety, color um, issues, depression, grief. Uh, identity, race, religion, sexual orientation. Uh, so there's a lot of different struggles that are there, and uh, you know they they know no no background with a lot of these things. So people don't talk about these topics a lot of times. Their fear of judgment, repercussions, uh, maybe fear that people will no longer want to uh, be friends with them, depending on you know we're talking different age groups here too. And so I just want others to see that we're more alike than we are different. And I just want to make a, the world a little better place by bringing us all together. And I want to remove those barriers. I want us to realize that uh, we need to start kind of talking about these topics right now that are currently taboo. And um, sometimes by making ourselves vulnerable, that's when we're able to grow the most. And I want us to be the light for one another and kind of shed our light um, to other people who may need it. And so um, what I've done is I've collected stories from people so far. And um, if you're interested in submitting a story, I would absolutely love it. But these struggles have been something that you could have experienced firsthand yourself. Maybe you've experienced it as a parent, as a friend, a relative. And I want stories from all ages and all walks of life. So even though this book was intended to kind of help our, our youth, I have found as the project rolls has rolled out, it's been very beneficial in helping all ages. So I'm looking for all ages and all walks of life. So if you're interested in submitting a story, I have the two different ways to submit that are there. Um, the ways that you could help me that would be absolutely huge is by sharing this link on Twitter. Um, you can submit a story to me. Currently, I have 10 completed stories. Uh, my original goal was 25, and that's proven to be a little bit more difficult um, given the restraints with COVID and the current struggles that a lot of people are finding to write about something they've struggled with has been a little bit more difficult. Uh, right now, the topics that I have submitted over these 10 different stories are about addiction, uh, postpartum depression. Um, there's also suicide that's kind of uh, mixed into the postpartum depression story anxiety, gender fluidity, sexual assault, loss to addiction, grief or child loss, abuse, child abuse, um, and then false idols. And so 
uh, I'm looking for anything related to those, or maybe you even have something else that's not mentioned there. So if anybody has any questions, don't hesitate to reach out and, and let me know. Um, I've been able to share some of the stories to other people who I've known that just kind of been struggling and they've reached back out and said that they've been beneficial. So I would love to have your story too. All right, thank you. You have five seconds to, to spare, so good deal. All right, awesome. Well, thank you very much, Kara. Um, yeah, if you want to put your links in the chat, that would be great. Oh, there goes my timer. Um, stop it. Okay, there we go. Um, so uh, yeah, if you want to put that in the chat, um, great activity, great, great uh, way to help even the adults cope with some of those issues that we're dealing with out in, out in life also. So, um, oh, don't forget your short URL for your uh, maybe. So, yep. all right. so let's see who we've got here next. Hmm, we only have four folks left. So, all right, I'm going to pop up. Please come up. All right, so let's see. We... Mark's Kurt. And then Chad's left. Okay, there's no one here. All right, Nadine, all right. Most of you will probably remember Nadine from um, our PD a couple weeks ago. She was uh, talking about HyperDoc, so she agreed to come back and show us something fun we can do here as well. So Nadine, are you good? Yep, I think so. Hi, everybody. Um, so you probably, like you said, you already remember me. Um, I, uh, I'm the district technology integration specialist at Franklin Township. I work with kindergarten through 12th grade. Um, I'm going to start presenting my screen. My screen's being a little wonky here. So let me do my entire screen. All right. Can you guys see my screen? Okay. Yep. Okay, Here we go. so um, I'm going to be talking to you guys about how to put your Bitmoji inside of Google Slides. So I had a teacher actually just yesterday reach out to me because they kept seeing this concept um, on, uh, on different teachers' accounts and they were curious about how it works. So I put together a little step-by-step -step for you. So in this, um, how this works, if you're interested in doing this, if you open up Snapchat and, uh, and you pick the filter where you see that your Bitmoji appears on the screen, you need to place a piece of white paper behind it and then just record it for four or five seconds, which is actually what I kind of did for you here, which my video is kind of lagging here. Once you're done with recording that, then email that video clip to yourself and you can download it to your computer or your Google Drive. Once you do that, then go out to the website Unscreen and on Unscreen, you can upload your video file. Um, once it's uploaded, the most important thing is that you need to save it as an animated PNG. So when you do that, you're going to go to Google Slides. Inside of Google Slides, you're going to insert, you're going to go to the word insert, image, upload from your computer, look for that file, and then you can see it appear on this slide. So one last thing that I'm going to add with that is that there's been this huge craze now about people, you know, recreating their Bitmoji um, in a slide for students and a lot of people are using backgrounds. Um, just make sure that you're choosing a floor and wall background that has the correct copyright um, because there is actually a Facebook group um, that's out there that um, people are getting all of those ideas, but I have a feeling that some of that stuff is not necessarily, um, is not necessarily uh, copyright friendly. So I know I probably went way, way short on my time, but I just cut to the chase. No, you're good. No, you're good. That's awesome. I've actually never seen how to do that. So that's pretty cool. Um, 
I know uh, we have quite a few Bitmoji fans on here, so that's exciting. And in fact, I will have to try that out here later as well. Um, I know one of the uh, other websites you really like to use for uh, 3D reuse that's really good is unsplash.com. Yes. Uh, the designing. I love that website as well. And I did pull some of the backgrounds um, that I saw in here. Some of those are actually um, from Unsplash. Gotcha. Do you have any, we had a question, what well, if you don't have Snapchat? Do you have any suggestions for that? Unfortunately, if you don't have Snapchat, unless any of you other gurus, and here's a link to the presentation if you guys want it. Um, unless any of you other guys have suggestions, I couldn't figure out a way to do it without having Snapchat. I mean, you don't, you don't really have to like be active on Snapchat. <laughs> right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Chris, right. and anybody else on here, if you guys know if there's a way to do it without having Snapchat, as far as I know, I, I think you have to. Got it. Gotcha. Um, all right. Awesome. Well, thank you very much, Nadine. Mm -hmm. We're going to move to our next one. And let's see, we only have a few more. I'm going to turn my screen. Uh, while he's doing that really fast, I did forget to mention that June 1st is the, I put it in the chat, but June 1st is the deadline for any stories if anybody wants to share for the project. So I meant to put that in the presentation. All right. Thanks, Tara. All right, we've got between Mark and Kurt here. Kurt, oh. I think it's because you live right down the road from me, Marcus. I think that's what it is. I'm so ready. The suspense has been killing me. <laughs> <laughs> Great things. I like that bit emoji uh, added. I've never seen it added that way, so that's good. So I've got a few things here. I'm Kurt Schleibaum. I teach down in Seymour, Indiana. I teach a manufacturing class where we let students manufacture real items inside of classrooms. So we run a company. So e-learning has been a little bit different since we can't manufacture anything, but it's been it's been good. I think when this is all over, everybody will be able to see so much good come out of it in education. And I love all the, how well it's brought our community together to add blended learning. So that's a little bit about me. Let me present here and we'll show you what I got. I had to add like five things because Seth and Chris, they always bring it and add like nine, 10, 15, 22 things. <laughs> All right, so can you all see my screen? A little thumbs yep. up here. All right, so what we're gonna do is, I'm an active Google Classroom user, and one of the things I didn't care for was that inside Google Classroom, I, I have eight-year-old twins that are actually in our district, so to help do their e-learning, uh, they have their own classroom that is created by me and my wife, so that we're gonna use them as our guinea pigs. So one of the things I wanted to do was be able to change some of these headers and keep things organized. So I want to show you how to change the text so that you don't have to keep using that aerial text so you can break it out into different topics. It's actually really easy. All you have to do is go to an online copy paste font changer. So we're going to come over here and let's just grab a topic. Oh, messed it up. Grab a topic. And we can select whatever text we want and you simply can click copy. You can run back to Google Classroom. Let's create a new topic, and you just paste it in, and click Add, and you can type all the way around that. Uh, one thing I do in my other classes, let's jump into an actual class. Here's my manufacturing class. I use this to denote anything that's going to go in the gradebook. To be able to separate out my Google Classroom from material or just information that I'm pushing to them, and I use a brain emoji. So this works also with emojis. You have to use a copy paste emoji. I like to use getemoji.com. I use it quite often. They have all kinds of crazy emojis. A lot of them good for education. Some of them are not. Make sure that you know that before you give this to your students. So if we had an art project, I could simply copy this little art project item, come back to our classroom, and add that to an assignment. So I'm just gonna rename the topic. It works the same way, paste it in. Now I have an emoji to denote different things. So if you wanted to be able to take a picture up, you can add a picture. But wait, there's more. There's some great emoji keyboards. So there's a Chrome extension 
called Emoji Keyboard, Emojis for Chrome, and that adds extensions. I love extensions, so you can use this extension simply by clicking over here, and you can search for items. You have people, objects. Uh, like I said, if you needed a camera, you'd be able to do, lock it up. And here you can actually add the text as well. So, hello class, we want a box. Then you can copy it all as in one, create a new topic or an assignment, and paste it straight into Google Classroom, and it's going to go. It's going to add your emoji. Uh, the only thing when you're using that, that uh, extension is it's not going to be able to change your text. You have to do the text with a copy-paste editor and the emoji separate. So that's one of them. My last thing, just to add a little bit of a bonus work to this, is a different Chrome extension called Gifit. If you've never seen Gifit before, what this allows you to do is make GIFs to add to your assignments to be able to get that student interest up from any YouTube video. So we can run over this YouTube video. I just pulled one at random. I don't know this guy at all, so we're going to make a GIF out of it. When you add the extension, it adds the Gifit button right on YouTube. You can click on there and it's going to create a GIF for the section of the video you want. You can save it and it looks like trying to lick his nose there or something. I don't know. I'm sorry for that guy. Don't want to embarrass anybody I know. All right. So that's what I've got. I know I'm probably a little bit under time, but those are some good things. Uh, and, and denoting my assignments with the brain for them to be able to know that those are for sure going in the book has definitely uh, organized my Google Classroom in a great way. One of the cool things to know with that is if you set your due dates and your students turn things in after you've returned it back to a, to a class, I'll jump back over here to classroom and show that just real quick. Ten seconds. Ten seconds. So if I, I come in here and I have my due dates and they turn something in, the emails that are produced by Google Classroom also have the emoji in it. So you know for sure that you need to get in there and grade that, put it in the group in the book. Because we all know these students, they didn't do it in the last seven weeks of e-learning. They did it last night at three in the morning, and they want it done in the book now. Thanks. <laughs> Let me share. Thank you, Kurt. <clears throat> That's some cool stuff. I really like those uh, and those emojis in there. It's really pretty sweet. So very cool. Um, can you guys send those into the chat, Kurt, when you get a chance? He's if he out, he'd probably turn off his mic. So, all right, awesome. Well, we have Marcus Painter that he lives about three miles down the road from me here. So, he's going to be presenting to the last. Um, Marcus, feel free to take it away. All right. Uh, do you guys hear me okay? All right. Um, <clears throat> so, uh, I just want to talk a little bit about uh, making e learning easier. Uh, using uh, Google Classroom and in particular Google Forms. Um, so uh, I actually just had a, a teacher, or excuse me, a couple of the teachers asking about this. Uh, if you're not screencasting uh, to give your instructions to your students, you're, you're missing the boat uh, because we can get things across to our students much better with our faces and our voices than we ever could if we're typing out text-based instructions. So um, I would urge you certainly to use Screencastify, Screencast-O-Matic, or in my case, Loom, uh, to create your screencast of your instructions. Um, however, uh, the issue becomes how do I get that video into a Google form? Because the next step is to make your e-learning self-contained and it's already contained within your Google Classroom, but I want to make it even more simplified by building out basically an epic Google form. And so I made a screencast, and no matter what platform you use, you're going to just download that screencast. Once you've downloaded it, you have, as a Google account, you have an educational Google account, you have a YouTube channel. So I went to create, and I went to upload video. And I upload that screencast or Loom video to YouTube. That's step one. Once I get it into YouTube, then, as you can see here, I can drop it into my Google form. And so my, uh, the thinking here is that this is almost a, a module. If you're a Canvas person or if you've ever worked with like Blackboard, something like that, uh, 
this is a self-contained thing now. Um, so you can see here, today's instructions, watch this first. Students see my ugly mug and they hear my terrible voice, just like in class. They watch that, they get their instructions. This is a Indiana history quiz. And so you can see here, I'm also incorporating some media into the Google form. It's not just a true, false, multiple choice, whatever kind of quiz. Um, this one happens to be multiple choice, but the question actually is identifying using a picture. Is that Sir Kyle Klein III? Is that William Scheidler Esquire, for example? Um, then we can also flip it and we can have a question where we've got images as the answers. Again, are we meeting all of our learners? Not if you just put nothing but text on the screen. So we're getting our, our learners because we're getting video, we're getting audio, we're getting visuals uh, as well. Talk about your EL students, those that are struggle, struggling readers. Now you're giving them both options. They can identify based on the picture or the language. Uh, again, another a video with questions. The last thing on this question, uh, a, a little used element is to make a question that's got check boxes and then use response validation. So on this question, I said, video question, which of the facts from the video did we discuss in last week's e-learning? Check all that apply. Not enough people use this. Uh, go to the question type, go to, whoop, get rid of that, response validation and click it. And what you get is this menu here. You can select exactly, select at most, or select at least. I said exactly three, and you can even customize the error text when they miss one of them. The kicker here is this. People want to think that Google Forms are just multiple choice, true, false, number lines, and things. And what I'm urging folks to do with e-learning is to consider that there are, there's deeper use here. And then the last section, I'm not paying attention to the time. Um, the last section here is student feedback. And you can have students upload a file to a Google form. And so I said, okay, time to check in. Upload a selfie expressing how you're feeling about the lesson so far. They can take a selfie on their Chromebook. They can upload the file directly there. Uh, so the idea is simple. Make it self-contained. Make it something that's visually appealing is going to help all of the learners more than just text, text, text based everything. And that is my two cents. Awesome. <clears throat> Thanks. I appreciate that, Marcus, because I know forms can do so much more than just the, uh, you know, putting the different questions in there. You know, that data validation makes a big difference. But I also love the, you know, the students aren't missing the teachers' faces, that's for certain, and some of our voices. So um, appreciate that. A lot of Google Forms love from here from me. So all right, last one, we've got Chad Ladoon. He's way down south. Way down south. You'll probably be able to tell in the way I talk. Yeah. <laughs> all right, take it away, Chad. All right, so uh, let me get my – oh, I am from Sullivan, Indiana. It's about – Gosh, two, two and a half hours south of Kyle there. Um, I'm a STEM teacher and a CTE teacher at a high school. And then I also do some um, STEM curriculum coordinating in the summer and as a, as a side job as well. So um, my thing today that I'm going to present to you is basically what I wanted to say. Let's see if I can get a tab here. Um, is why... Can everybody see the screen? Let's see. Everybody good? All right. So um, it's basically, I wanted to say why everybody else's uh, technology tools were going to fail. But man, there were some great technology tools being shown there. So um, so I'm going to talk about the, the process that everybody's going through right now in order to, you know, they're struggling to present uh, content to, to students and keep them engaged and keep their lessons relevant. So my advice is to place the importance on, on the process itself. And all the technology and tools which have been presented today, they've been amazing, and all of them definitely have a place in e-learning um, and beyond. But in the next few minutes, I want to tell you how to make sure that each of them is successful in the intentions that they are meant for. See, I've had the opportunity over the, uh, over the years to present, just like was done there, uh, lots of different pieces of technology 
whether it be apps or whether it be extensions. And while each of them has a great functionality and they each have a great purpose, they're all doomed to fail. And I only say that if they're, they're doomed to fail when they're not used correctly. So I know each of the presenters today, and I can assure you that they have researched and used, their, used these concepts in the correct way, but sometimes that simply is just not the case. You see, each of these pieces of technology or apps or extensions, whichever one was presented today, they're all being used in a process of meeting a challenge. In the case of today, a lot of us are trying to meet the challenge of engaging students. Or some of the tools that we give students in class are, are used as a problem solving method um, to some challenges that we've provided as teachers. See, I'm a STEM teacher, so I believe that there is, there is great power in the process, even more than the product itself. Um, don't confuse what I'm saying, because I understand that everybody in, eventually has to produce. Everybody ends up having to produce something. But that great product that we get to produce will only be as successful as the great process that we go through in order to create it. None of the pieces of presented today will reach their full potential unless the proper commitment is given to the process of problem solving and meeting challenges. See, our goal as educators, it should be to create students who recognize a challenge that's been set before them, and they select methods and tools which will allow them to meet these challenges with the greatest degree of success possible. Maybe our students will select some of these tools that have been presented today. Maybe we'll select some of these, but without the understanding that each of us is selecting it as a problem solving tool, we aren't reaching our potential whenever we're teaching. When providing e-learning activities, you know, we're really providing assignments um, and opportunities that extend beyond the classroom and beyond the computer screen. And when we relate these strategies and pieces of technology to a process that, that students will use in an everyday life, which is problem solving, we're providing um, an opportunity to show them that it applies to much more than just our content area that we're presenting. We're providing problem solving tools, tools that when committed to and used in the process of problem solving, they enable students to meet the challenges and produce the greatest results that they possibly can be. Um, without this commitment and the realization, um, each of the previous pieces of technology will fail in some sense. Uh, and they, they, the reason they fail is because they don't reach their greatest potential. So this is why problem solving through processes like the design process is something crucial to, uh, to the success of each attempt we make and why teachers everywhere should include it in their classroom, whether that be in the classroom in person or whether that be through e-learning and online. Got 20 seconds. I'm done. Oh, man, I didn't have to say anything. How about that? <laughs> Good timing, and you guys are pretty well timed here. So, all right, awesome. Well, thank you, Chad. That's definitely some good things to think about with uh, when we're dealing with technology here. So, um, I am going to put in the chat. We have a quick little Google form. If you guys could fill that out for me, please. Um, while you are filling that out, um, I think it's only fair that I show you one of my favorite little tricks as well. So. Um, I'm going to share my screen. When you're filling the form out, it's Kurt with a C. That's the one you're looking for. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> with a C and an S, right? All right. So um, the whole time here during e-learning, I know that some of you have probably had some conversations with some of your students. They're like, I just don't understand your steps and what you want me to do. And so, uh, you know, I'm not going to lie. Sometimes I get those questions from teachers as well. And so, but I really like to take the higher road. So I always respond in a nice, kind way. Um, if for some reason I feel a little sarcastic one day, you may get something like this from me. This is called uh, lmgtfy.com. Let me Google that for you.com. So say for instance, somebody asks you, they're like, uh, so what's the weather gonna be like today? So I'm like, um, well, I guess I could pull up my app and take a look for you. I could just look outside my window. The other thing you could do is you could just go to lmgtfy.com. I always like to choose the Google option. It's usually one that starts off here. 
And I'm going to type in the question. So if I type in the question, how's the weather, I can preview this. Uh, I can get a link as, to, as, a, as a teacher. I can get this link that's automatically copies, and I can send this back to the student or to the teacher. Uh, and then what I can do is I'm going to show you how it works. If I, if I was to send this link to you and you were to just copy and paste it into another URL, then it gives you the steps. So it tells you step one, visit google.com. Step two, type your question. Step three, click the button. That's it. So that's my little uh, tip I like to send out. You can always uh, preview this as well. So you, you wanna make sure it looks good before you send it. Um, this is how I like to respond to some people sarcastically. So lmgtfy.com. That is how you can show people to go to a Google browser and to actually share uh, how to type in their Google search. So let's check our results here. I should have had a uh, should have had a nice little uh, nice little uh, drum roll here, but I don't. So give me about another thirty seconds. I'm getting some text messages off to the side. I don't know what these people want from me. Oh, it's some of you guys. So, um, <laughs> Bill, not five seconds left. So, um, all I right. I tried to vote for Chris, but I don't have permission. Uh, that's exactly correct. So I, I didn't give you guys permission. I kept it inside the inside of our uh, district. That way you guys can cheat. And everybody only had one vote, too. So, all right. Here we go. Our winner of today's Delphi Slam with eight of our 19 votes, winning by a landslide, is Mr. Kurt Schleibaum. So, congratulations. Kurt with a C. Kurt with a C. So, congratulations, thank Kurt. Um, I got to thank, thank all of our guests today. Thank you so much for taking some time out of your busy days. Uh, make sure you add some links in the chat, or if you have anything, email them to me, and I'll send an email out to the staff. Staff, thank you so much for joining. Um, hopefully, there's some cool things that you learned here, and um, like I said, I'll send out an email as a follow-up tomorrow. Enjoy your last day, kind of, of e-learning tomorrow with your students, those that are completing everything, and enjoy the sunshine today. So, I appreciate everybody coming. See you later.